Hi everybody and welcome. Today we are replacing the motherboard on my Creality Ender 3 Pro 3D printer. The motherboard is the brains of the 3D printer. And why are we going to replace it, you may ask? There, there are two main reasons. One, this upgraded motherboard will make it quieter and allow me to add more features. All right, let's jump in. Step one, we have to open up the case with the old motherboard on the 3D printer. On this printer, it's in the box right below the bolt plate. You need to unscrew four screws to get access to the motherboard. And I have a hex wrench and I'm going to unscrew that top screw first to get into the motherboard. Now that I have that top screw on the Ender 3 Pro, there are three bottom screws to get access to the board. One, two, three. All right, let's unscrew them. You know, spend a lot of time unscrewing things. And whenever I unscrew a screw, I got to make sure I put it in a place that it won't roll off the table. I've had too many mistakes from trying to take a shortcut with that way. And when you lose a screw, you can spend 20 minutes looking for it on the floor. Not a very good use of time. All right. Now that we have that off, that gives us access to the board. Now you want to be careful with this because there's a wire attached to the fan and you don't want to break that. So the first thing I'm going to do is unplug this fan so that I don't break this cord. Step two, once you have access to the motherboard, we need to release the motherboard from that case. And there are four screws to do this. Tip. You should place the screws for the motherboard in a different location than you place the screws for the case. That way you won't mix them up when you're putting the 3D printer back together. Did that do it? No, it feels pretty sturdy on there. Hmm. Tip. There is one hidden underneath a bunch of wires for me, and you should never yank the motherboard off. If it's too tough to pull up, it means you missed a screw. I made this mistake, so I'm sharing that with you. Step three, we're gonna detach all the labeled wires from the old motherboard. If they're already labeled, which many of them are, that makes life easier. We don't have to plug them immediately into the new motherboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna orient them the same way. So you'll see these are the four motor ports and I'm gonna line them up the same way so I can start doing this one by one um, pretty easily. So I'm gonna take the X, take out the X motor. Oh, and you'll notice there is hot glue here. So I have little snippet flush cutters which can, can come in handy to try and get the hot glue out. Um, they do that to secure, but it really is annoying when you want to change things out. Oh, I got it out. I'll do that with all of these because they're labeled on the wire, so I won't worry about mixing them up because the wire is labeled too, which is very convenient and very nice. So if you can see here, we have a Y stop, a Z stop, and an X stop with these three. And this is labeled. So any, any cord that's labeled, I can pull out because I know what it is. So this is the Y stop. This is the X stop. It's really nice to have labeled wire. Step four. We're going to transfer all the unlabeled wires from the old motherboard to the new motherboard directly so we don't get them confused. The first wire I'm going to transfer is the blue and yellow fan wire. And you can transfer that wire to either one of the controllable fan ports on the new motherboard. Next, I am unplugging the sensors for the hotbed and for the extruder and plugging them into the appropriate location on the new board. On the old board, it's B hot for bed sensor and E temp for extruder sensor. And on the new board, 
it is TB for bed sensor and TH for extruder sensor. So these first two wires here control the extruder. In other words, it's what it sends electricity to the extruder to heat up that will melt the plastic. The second one does the same for the heated bed. There's a plus and a minus and it sends electricity to the bed to heat it up. And last but not least, these two wires control the fan. What you should do, which I didn't and regretted, is I should have labeled them first before disconnecting them. That way I could be certain what they are. And if you look on the underneath of the board, you can often see what the label is for each of those wires. For each wire, you will need to make sure the clips on the new board are fully open. Then, release the wire from the old board by loosening the screw on top. Insert the wire firmly into the new board and tighten the screw. You will have to do this process for all the wires for the extruder, the hotbed, the fan, and finally, the power supply. Step five, we can now take all the wires that were labeled and place them in the new motherboard where we know they're supposed to go. We're now gonna plug in the motors to the new board. We'd already unplugged them from the old board. If the wires don't reach, feel free to snip a zip tie to make sure that they can reach and then plug in the extruder, which is what pushes the filament through the nozzle. Z motor, which controls the 3D printer's motion on the Z axis, which is up and down. The Y motor, which controls the 3D printer's movement on the Y axis, which is back and forth. And then the X motor, which controls the 3D printer's movement in the, on the X axis. We are now going to plug in the X stop the Y stop and the Z stop. These are the switches that allow the 3D printer to automatically home and therefore know its position in space relative to that home position. Last but not least, don't forget to plug in the screen, which is that large rainbow cord. Remember, most of these clips can only fit one way. So if it's not fitting in, flip it and never force the cord in. Step six, we're gonna screw the motherboard back into the 3D printer and put the case back on. After that, you're ready to upload some new firmware, which we'll talk about in another video up here and put this thing to the test. Line up the new board with the screw holes on the 3D printer. Then, route all the cables through the opening, except the rainbow wire for the screen. Then, screw in the new motherboard using the same four screws that were holding the old motherboard. These screws should be put in the exact same position as before, as seen in this diagram. Once the motherboard is reattached, it's time to put on the case. Before putting on the case though, make sure you plug in the fan on the case into one of the controlled fan ports as seen in this diagram. Next, you have to reattach the case to the 3D printer. Make sure you aren't clamping any of the wires and the rainbow screen wire is routed through the side. There are three screws on the bottom to attach the case and one on the top. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As always, please subscribe and ring that bell. It really helps us out and you can see more videos like this. Even if you don't want to see more videos like this, it helps us out. So please subscribe. Remember to take some time to learn and create every day. Oh. Mm -hmm.